Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another Dark Souls 1 lore through. Uh, we're at the end. Yeah. I don't think there's anything else to do, so let's offer the rest of the souls to the Lord Vessel. So yeah, this is really cool. I love this. Um, looks like this is maybe like, I don't know. It seems like it could be like souls or something. It's just pure whiteness. And then we can see the, the uh, remnants of the dead black knights that came, that fought the chaos demons and came here with Gwyn. Um... I really like how explosive the linking of the fire looks. Like it's pointed the wrong direction. I've also wondered if this is uh, the place where we fought Artorias and Ga and Ga Goth is in something like this. If not, I wonder if it's like some sort of architecture that's similar to that, like, a city of giants or something like that. But yeah, if you haven't been able to get them until now, they have all of the, uh, all the black knights that you can essentially farm, because they yeah, it seems that everything, like, the, the blast is all pointing this way. I wonder if anyone's ever, uh... Because, like, you go into that building to, like, fight Gwen. Oops. But I wonder if he linked it over there or something. Or if it's just a bra. It's a. Nice, I got the Black Knight Greatsword. I think I already got that. But yeah, very mysterious. I love how there's ash all over here. Oops. <laughs> that guy usually falls off the edge when I fight him. Black Knight Shield. I think we've gotten that before. Either way, I don't think it says much. Shield the Black Knights that Wander Lord ran. Yeah face the chaos demons and were charred black from fighting the chaos demons. Before I had said that the black knights were black because of the linking of the flame. Um, but I think that's the most uh, damning evidence to what I said. Um, I th the reason that I thought that the flame is what made them black is it that you just, you go spiral around here and the actual place it was linked is like actually in, right there. 
Uh, maybe I'm just looking around. Anyway, the reason I thought it was the um, it was the linking of the flame that made them black is because of the Black Knight set. Helm of the Black Knights who haunt Lordran. The knights followed Lord Gwyn when he departed to link the fire, but they were burned to ashes in the newly kindled flame, wandering the world as disembodied spirits ever after. So I just kind of thought they were burned here, but it, they were burned to ashes, like they died. So I guess the things that we see here are actually not real. They're, they're spirits, which is probably why they don't respawn. There's our boy. We didn't do his quest. Yeah, see, like, even this. Like, we definitively go down. I mean, in fact, yeah, there. You can see the the fading flame. Can we see Glenn? Oh, it would be so cool if you could see Glenn. Huh. There's so many... Oh! No, I don't think that's him. There are, you can see some bosses before you fight them, but I guess not here. So yeah, I'm not sure why these are all like facing over here when the flame is clearly right there. Wonder if there's any been ever been an explanation for that. All right, not great with the, uh... you can parry that. Cool. Yeah, <clears throat> they drop various white and blue chunks and stuff. This is the one I'm really dreadful at. That was luck. Did we get the Halberd? Yes. I mean, I'm not going to use it, but that's, uh, that's a great weapon, and it's a pretty rare drop. Um, let's look just in case for some weird reason it has a great lore on it. Yeah, just the same as all the other one. Alright, well now that we've cleared all those guys out, let us uh, grab Solaire here. And I don't think we can do the trick, I think he's just way too far away to like get in with Gwyn with less health. But we don't need to. Come on, Solaire. I don't have a praise the sun emoji. Emoji. Hug me. He's going to backstab me. All right. I could hurt Dusk, but I can't hurt you. I always try to start the first hit off with a parry, although I'm not good at parrying at Gwyn. So this is my only... There he is, hollowed, a shadow of his former self. I don't think you can backstab him. Stagger him. Come on, Solaire, beat him. He's your son. Stagger. Oops. Yeah, 
this fight's really nothing with Solaire. Why did I not get hit both of those times? Yeah, hit him with the Sunlight Spear. Try to parry it. Oh, don't die. <laughs> I'm just trying to parry him. Just, just go. Good. Solaire landed the final blow. Good job, Solaire. Keep hitting him. See ya. Awesome. Yeah, I don't really know why the direction of all the kind of blast is there. It's facing, like, essentially sideways to the flame. Maybe it's just a weird programming thing. All right, let's look at um, Gwyn's soul, which, you know, he split up his original soul he found. So this is literally his soul, which happens to also be powerful, yet he was small. I mean, my only explanation for that is that he is, you know, like he's hollowed, He's the fire's fading. He's, I mean, he basically used up his soul to, like, feed the fire, which is why his soul looks like fire. But, I don't know, it might not be the best theory. Alright, uh, Soul of Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. Soul of Gwyn, Lord of Sunlight and Cinder, who linked the first flame. Lord Gwyn bequeathed most of his power to the gods and burned as Cinder for the first flame. But even so, Lord Gwyn's soul is a powerful thing indeed. Okay, right there. At least addresses it. It still says it's powerful, but it says it shouldn't be. Also, um, if we were to believe that the um, descriptions are omniscient narrator and are not lying, this, I think, is the only item description that says that he's uh, going to link the first flame himself. Like, not an illusion of him, not a, not him after he died or whatever, like, or someone else, and I don't know. So, you get two choices here, although it's not very clear. I mean, which I think is part and parcel of the game. So, you can, you know, this bonfire is out, and you can link the fire here, and sacrifice yourself for um, for the Age of Fire to extend, but of course I'm Team Koth and I'm going to do the ending where we don't link it. My lord, bless thy safe return. Let Kath and Frant serve your highness. We are here to serve your highness. It's interesting, you can see there's a lot of primordial serpents. Let true dark be cast upon the world. The Lord Vessel is also destroyed. Our Lord hath returned. So yeah. That's the original Dark Souls. Let's see if I can skip this. Okay. Um, and then it just throws us into this again. Like those beetles on the floor. Might as well uh, go in here and beat the asylum demon. 
for the first time and get his weapon that way. I know we already got it with the sack, but trading to the crows. But since it's like a unique event, let's do it. To cap off this series by just going back to Firelink Shrine. And so yeah, all of your bonfires are still there and they have uh, they're kindled the way that you kindled them. What's up? I feel like at a certain point it's good, but like I don't think that um, new game scales perfectly. <laughs> I get the demon's great hammer. Built from stone arch trees, used by lesser demons at the North Undead Asylum. This hammer is imbued with no special power. So yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Alright, guess all the items are back. Grab him before he turns the corner. It's fun, like, being a bit overpowered and just, like, you know, crushing the game the second time. And yeah, you get all the well, no, keys no. removed from your thing, and yeah, you get the... Th this is one thing I don't like, too. It's like, you get the big pilgrim key from him, if you... I mean, like, why not just have it... Oh, because if it dropped when you killed him the first time, you wouldn't talk to him. Ugh, I don't like it. No. I don't. Yeah, well, we're gonna kill you. <laughs> Yeah, it's a weird gameplay necessity. Um, like if you, you know, they want to make sure that. I mean, if you are crazy enough to beat the like in your first playthrough, beat the undead, beat the whatever I'm trying to say, <laughs> beat the asylum demon the first time around, and then. Then you would get the pilgrim's key, and then you could just leave the store, and you would never have Estus. You know. Like, they want to make sure that you talk to that guy. No matter what. It's a good thing, but it just doesn't make any sense why he would have it. And we've seen this. The crow brings us, who I think is a servant of Velka. I guess, you know, we can kind of dispel all the final theories here or whatever. Um, I mean, so I think that... I think that this whole plot might have been set up by Velka a long time ago in an effort to overthrow Gwyn. I think Gwendolyn has a lot of power. I think he's doing most of the things that you see in this actual playthrough. So, although the servant of Velka probably is still working, I think Gwendolyn has taken over for Velka in a lot of ways. Um, most notably, the um, the Blades of the Dark Moon. You, they now look over the Book of the Guilty where Velka used to. Um, you know, I think that he's trying to keep Anerlando chugging and do as much as he can. Um, and I think, you know, he wants people, he wants the unundead to be able to come through and, uh, link the fire so that, you know, essentially what we just did in that timeline, you know, obviously we've like reset this timeline in a sense. 
um, is we've extended the Age of Fire, and then Orlando could be at its peak again. Maybe Gwendolyn could come back. Reminds me, I for, I totally forgot I spaced when I went to Anne Orlando to actually get her ring during the Covenant. We'll read it in the other playthrough. Um, but I, that's such an easy thing to get, but that I didn't before I killed her. But maybe she'll come back, or maybe, you know, mo a lot of the gods will come back, and, and then Gwendolyn will be at full power. And I think that, you know, Koth is not working for Velka or doing anything like that. Um, you know, I think that the Dark Wraiths are, you know, just general enemies to the gods, and Koth, like, controls them so that, you know, he can um, get someone to basically, like, get rid of Gwyn and then let it go to dark. Um, as we see from the fact that there is more than one Dark Souls, and because of the way that they are, it shows that our choice didn't mean anything. Um, whether we extend the Age of Fire, whether we, like, brought on the Age of Dark, the, the, the games that we play after this are so far in the future that, you know, they they kind of show that no matter what we do, we're going to always come back to these states um, where we're at that, you know, in Dark Souls 3 in particular, you know, it, it gets so, the fire's been linked so many times that that's what the game is about. It's about all the people that had linked the fires before and that there's a new kind of event we need to, to do stuff for. But um, obviously we'll get to that in this game. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I think we're just at a... Uh, um, you know what? Let's not do another episode. <laughs> So yeah, this is my uh, my other playthrough here where I've gotten all the items that you can get in the game. Or at least most of them, I'm not sure. Here's the red eye orb, which we don't have <clears throat> in, uh, in our game, because I didn't level up Koth's Covenant, but let's see what it says. Online play item. Defeat the Master of the World and you have invaded to acquire humanity. The Dark Wraiths of Kath use this orb to seek humanity and plunge further into dark. Perhaps they are more human than we. I mean, it talks a little bit about this, about how, you know, humanity and dark are, like, the same and that, like, too much of one thing is bad or whatever. Just enough humanity is good. But it does certainly talk about the Dark Wraiths, like... You know, are they, did they collect humanity, so are they more human? Alright, let's see if there's anything else. I don't have the pendant in this one either. Okay. Um, or maybe the pendant is one of these? No. Alright, let's go through and see if there's anything here that we haven't read. I think we read all these. Firestorm, Primal Pyromancy taught by Quailana. It, 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 this is interesting that uh, the Tempest, the, te the Tempestuous Raging Flames resemble those summoned by the Daughters of Chaos when they challenge the Ancient Dragons and Scorch the Earth. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting things in this. Resembled 
those summoned by the Daughters of Chaos when they challenge the Ancient Dragons. So, Chaos... Daughters of Chaos implies that Chaos was discovered by Isolith before the Ancient Dragon War and before the Daughters were born or created. And then it looks like they used Chaos to challenge the dragons. However, Quelana doesn't have any Chaos pyromancies. Everything that she sells is just... Um, it's just regular pyromancy. So, I don't know. Like, I think she, yeah, she sells the fire whip, but then the the chaos fire whip is what we see the the last daughter of chaos in Isolith right before the bed of fire. So she's, like, incorporating chaos at this point. Um, yeah, so flash sweat. I think we got this one. This is the one up. Yeah, we got all these. Oh yeah, I got Undead Rapport. Let's, uh, let's try that after this. I want to know what that, uh, actually does. Okay, we got Soothing Sunlight. Do we? Yeah, no, this is the Maidens, yeah. This is, a lot of this is just going to be me looking at this and going, yeah, did we read this? So, apologies for that. Okay, we got Lightning Spear and Great Lightning Spear, which are things that I didn't have before. Miracle passed down to those bound by the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant, her Lightning Spear. We saw um, Solar using this. Lightning Spears inflict rare lightning damage and are very effective against magic fire and most of all dragons. Now we have the Great Lightning Spear. Miracle passed down to those bound by the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant. The weapon of the god of war, who inherited the sunlight of Lord Gwyn, so that's the firstborn, but had respect only for arms and nothing else. And then we have Sunlight Spear. Miracle born from the fading soul of Gwyn, hurl a sunlight spear. So this, it's interesting. So there's the Sunlight Spear, the Great Lightning Spear, and then the Lightning Spear. And they're all in different states of decay. I mean, they're like tales. This is the miracle that like actually existed. This is the one that was written about the God of War, apparently. And this is probably just a, you know, a variation of those. But anyway, in the war that marked the dawn of the Age of Fire, so... The Age of Fire was marked by the war, not by finding the soul. Gwyn wielded these rays of sunlight, which remained which remained fierce even as they fade. Then we had Sunlight Blade. We 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 read this. And we have the Dark Moon Blade. Miracle granted to those bound by Covenant of Gwyndolin, Lord Gwyn's lastborn, boost right weapon with rays of dark moon. The power of the rays of the Dark Moon are manifested in vengeance, and the deeper the animus, the more devastating the attack. So yeah, I guess it's just it's just a companion piece to the Sunlight Blade. Sunlight Blade you find in the dark, in Gwyn's tomb after you beat Gwendolyn, and Dark Moon Blade you get from leveling up in the Dark Moon Covenant. So we have the Great Lord Sword Dance, which we read, and then I got the Great Lord Grave Lord Great Sword. Miracle known only by the servants of the first dead. Um, many have died and many eyes were yes, it's the same. Oh, okay. Many have died and many eyes were claimed to realize the Grave Great Sword Dance, a Grave Lord ritual known only by its clo his closest servants. There we go. So this is what you get from Artorius. Soul. Uh, the great sword belonged to Lord Gwyn's knight Artorius, who fell to the abyss, swallowed by the dark with its master. This sword is tainted by the abyss, and now its strength reflects its wielder's humanity. This is the great lord great sword we get from Gwyn's soul. One of the things we get from it. Great sword born from the soul of Gwyn, lord of Cinder. 
As bearer of the ultimate soul, Gwyn wielded the bolts of the sun, but before linking the fire, divided that power amongst his children and set off only this great sword as his companion. Yeah, so he gave... Yeah, so it's interesting because, to me, this also indicates that um, Gwendolyn is not Gwyn's son. And is maybe Seath's son. You know, this says that before he linked the fire, he divided his power amongst his children. We know that the god of war... Again, this is something you wouldn't do if, if the the firstborn had been rescinded of his deific status already. I mean, it definitely happened after Gwyn was gone. But he gives the god of war the sunlight spear. Like, he gives him that power. Um, sun manifested in and lightning. And in Guinevere is the goddess of sunlight um, and the uh, bounty of fertility, bounty and fertility and all that. So um, that is, I guess she's the princess of the sun or something like that. Anyway, so he gives his children the power of the sun but Gwendolyn has the power of the moon. And the way that that's written there just sounds like, you know, Gwendolyn wasn't born or was very young when this linking of the fire happened. Anyway. Bandit's knife I don't think we got. This wide single-edged short sword is favorite of the lowy thieves and bandits. Primarily a slicing weapon, but highly effective when used for critical hits, such as after parrying or from behind. And then we have Priscilla's dagger, which I didn't get in the game. This sword, one of the rare dragon weapons, came from the tale of Priscilla, the dragon crossbreed, in the painted world of Ariamas. Possessing the power of life hunt, it dances about when wielded in a fashion reminiscent of the white-robed painting guardians. So we have like this connection between Lord's Blade Ciaran and Priscilla and the painting guardians and potentially the Lord's Blades. I'd be interested to hear anyone's thoughts on that because I don't have anything definitive, but it's I just like the connections there. Uh, yeah, and I just... You know, I ascended everything to the maximum. Um, do we get this one? Pretty sure we did. Oh, well, this is the cursed one. So it says the sword can damage ghosts as it was cursed when Artorias joined a covenant with the creatures of the abyss. It's interesting. I don't think I ever knew that. Um, it implies that, uh... Either there's a covenant we don't know about, or that this is, you know, Koth is the dark serpent that, you know, made Ulysil kind of summon Manus. Uh, it kind of sounds like he joined the Dark Wraiths there. Um, but yeah, this is another weapon that you can use to, um, to fight the ghosts in Milando. Uh, Silent Straight Sword. This standard longsword belonging to Solaire of Astara is of high quality, is well forged, and has been kept in good repair. Easy to use and dependable, but unlikely to live up to its grandiose name. And this is interesting, so... Now that we're at the end, I will not spoil it, because it does come up in later games, but... The creators, especially around the time Dark Souls was being talked about, said that the Firstborn is not in the game. So it isn't Solaire, even though everything points to it, you know. Um, but I think it might be Miyazaki having a little fun with everything, because that Sunlight Straight Sword certainly looks like what's in that, you know, statue that everyone's worshipping. Um, and uh, it might not be the Sunlight Straight Sword. I mean, the fact that Solaire has a Sunlight Straight Sword just implies that, you know, you know whatever. But, of course, it's not true. Dark Sword, I don't know how you get this, but I have it here. The Sword of the Knights of the Four Kings of Milando. Its blade is wide and thick and is wielded for an unusual in an unusual manner. 
When the four kings were seduced by evil, their knights became dark wraiths, servants of the dark who wielded these dark swords. Aha! So, dark four kings. So apparently, Kath is seen as evil here because what happened in Nulando was the same as what happened in Ulysil, and it said that a Artorius joined the covenant and became cursed and we can see here that the, the the knights of the four kings are actually what are fighting down there they aren't strictly dark wraiths but they became dark wraiths we call them dark wraiths because they were seduced by evil or Koth and uh, and they joined the covenant just like Artorius did that's cool never knew that And then this is the one I think we made. Seratorius hunted the dark wraiths, and his sword strikes harder against dark servants. See, that is interesting, because that now, that's a different story. I've never really fully, because I thought that was like the dark wraiths, the guys in New Londo, and I'm like, but he wasn't in New, I mean, New Londo was long after Artorius was dead, but he hunted the dark wraiths in Ulysil, and then eventually joined the Covenant. Cool. Um, Bastard Claymore. Yeah, I went with the strength build on this one. 50 strength, 40 endurance. Um, did we read this one? Yeah, we read this one. I don't think we read the shield. A curved sword born from the soul of Quelag, daughter of the Witch of Isolith, who was transformed into a chaos demon. Like Quelag's body, the sword features shells, spikes, and a coating of chaos fire, power affected by wielder's humanity. It's a dex and humanity weapon. It's pretty good. It looks like it's part of Quelag herself. Here's a jagged ghost blade. Jagged blade wielded by the New Londo ghosts. Violent thrust attack. One of the cursed weapons inflicts damage to ghosts. I actually don't have the ghost blade, so I guess strictly speaking, this isn't a hundred percent. There's a few things I've missed um, in this playthrough, but I mean most of them I have. Uh, and great, oh yeah, we got the great life sword. We got the chaos blade in our playthrough. Um, Oh, blacksmith, giant hammer, I didn't kill that blacksmith. Wooden hammer of the giant blacksmith in Anorlandu who handles lightning weapons. The giant blacksmith forges with this wooden hammer as it would be hazardous to handle lightning weapons with metals. Maybe that was made by Goth, who was a woodcarver. Small's hammer. Great hammer from the soul of Executioner Smo, who guards the cathedral in the forsaken city of Anorlando. Smo loved his work and ground the bones of his victims into his own feed, <laughs> ruining his hopes of being ranked with the four knights. So, yeah, he wanted to be... I mean, it always sounds like there could be a bunch of different types of knights, so I think the fact that they're called the four knights is... It's not like, oh, it's a set number of four, it's just that they were four at the time that all the events happened but it sounds like Smo wanted to be uh, for an, one of the knights uh, the fifth knight <laughs> like the fifth beetle but uh, he ground the bones of his victims into his own his food so he was like a cannibal which is probably why he was so big and that was the thing that apparently Quinn didn't like he said nope you cannot have a uh, the knighthood. <laughs> it's just interesting. Weapon born from the mystical creature of the dark root garden, the moonlight butterfly. The horns of the butterfly, a being created by Seath, are imbued with pure magic power. Albert, Guardian 
tail yeah i didn't cut this off sliced tail of the sanctuary garden this flexible spiked and highly poisonous tail would make rather <laughs> make a rather obnoxious weapon Uh, Black Boy Ferris. I didn't kill the Ferris or whoever inherits Ferris's stuff uh, in the forest. The preferred Black Bow of the heroic archer Ferris has a longer range than most stand than standard bows, but is more difficult to use. Without proper abilities, the results would be underwhelming. And it has an S scaling with Dex. Yeah, I have 15 Dex on this character. I really did not do any Dex. Um, and then we have Goth's Great Bow, which I didn't grab. Great Bow used by Hawkeye Goth of Lord Gwyn's Four Knights for Dragon Slaying. This bow is larger than than even those used by the famed Dragon Slayers. Only their leader, Goth, had the strength to handle it. Which makes me think that the original Dragon Slayers were probably giants. But, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe what Chester was using was a sniper crossbow. Here's the Avalon. Repeating crossbow cherished by the weapon craftsman Idis. Its elaborate design makes it closer to a work of art than a weapon. Intricate mechanism makes heavy damage possible through triple shot firing bolt of bolts, but in fact each bolt inflicts less damage. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up, but I think this is this might be what um, Gwendolyn uses, which would again tie him to Seath a little closer. And I don't know anything about Idas. I think this is the only time you read about Craftsman Idas, because he was just really into that. Uh, Ten Dark Moon Callus. Did we do that one? Yeah. We didn't get Logan's Catalyst, however. Catalyst of Big Hat Logan, the great sorcerer and seeker of knowledge. Originally the same catalyst employed by Vinheim sorcerers, sorcerers, only terribly strengthened over time due to Logan's use. Very powerful when used by one of superior intelligence. So yeah, it's like the standard one, but it has like a little knot at the end. Shouldn't have gone to look at that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we saw these. I still. I think Beatrice's catalyst and the ivory and Ulysil just look similar. Like she got that from Ulysil. Maybe she's from you know, so she traversed the abyss. But again, that was the one in Yolanda, so I don't know. Demon's Catalyst, Eyes of Lith, Tin Banishment, Tin Crystallization. We read all those. Sunlight Talisman is uh, Solaire's. Medium for casting miracles of the gods. The Talisman of Solaire of Astor, the Knight of Sunlight, is decorated with a holy symbol illustrated by Solaire himself. This talisman is a projection of Solaire's upstanding, unwavering unwavering faith dark moon talisman medium for casting mir miracles of the gods granted to dark moon blades in adherence of the covenant of the dark sun Gwendolyn. this talisman demands dutiful faith from its owner but has a high miracle adjustment i think we might have read that actually um I don't think we read this, but yeah. Tower Knight Kite Shield. Oh yeah, we did read that. I think this is... Oh yeah, we read that one too. Great Shield of Artorias. I think this is what we made in our playthrough. Iron Round. 
Yeah. Thick Iron Shield of Shiva of the East, heaviest of the standard shields, deflects enemy attacks, a famous specimen from Shiva's collection, but none who have faced it <laughs> live to tell the tale. And the Sunlight Shield. So, shield of Solera Vistora, Knight of Sunlight, decorated with a holy symbol, but Illust Solher illustrated it himself, and it has no divine powers on its own. On its own, as if it does when yielded by someone. As it turns out, Solaire's incredible prowess is a product of his own training and nothing more. Do we get this one? Uh, giant shield. Yeah, we saw that. Oh, stone great shield. Mossy round great shields used by the guardian of the dark root garden, the stone knight. The stone knight is a creation of ancient magic, and this shield is imbued with the same power, but is also extremely heavy. Well, we saw them in the royal wood as well, similar versions, and that ancient magic probably does both of them. And that's that. Um, we read these. Go goths personally crap. Yeah, we did actually. Okay. Oh, let's make it a little long going through all these things, but I think it's a, it's a good way to wrap up everything, so. Uh, tattered, I didn't get any of this stuff, I don't think I missed, I jumped down at one point and never got this. Hood worn by pyromancers of the Great Swamp, though it appears tattered, is actually quite strong. Their attire offers substantial protection against poison, fire, and other forces of nature out in the hinterlands where they were driven. So yeah, we heard from the one guy, I can't remember his name, the pyromancer that teaches the stuff up here. He says like that he might have been thought of as bad by being a pyromancer. And so it looks like they were driven out um, from the Great Swamp. Which is interesting. Boots pyromancers are incredibly tough on account of the rugged grasslands and treacherous swamps they must traverse. Their souls are nearly impenetrable. Helm of Solaire. Of high quality but lacking any particular power, Solaire's incredible prowess must have come from rigorous training alone, for his equipment exhibits no special traits. That's why I didn't kill him in our game. It's not the most amazing lore. Do we read these? Yeah, I think we did. We have Ferris's hat. Broad brimmed hat favored by the archer hero Ferris. Ferris was an accomplished archer, and though he was human, he ranked alongside Hawkeye Goth, one of the four knights of Lord Gwyn. His hat is universally popular amongst children. It's funny, they say he, although the person that we kill to get this from is a woman, and people have argued about that a lot. Could just be that this is passed down. Uh, and we do have this stuff. Robe worn by Big Hat Logan. It is said that uh, to have been from his apprentice days at Dragon School, but it is so worn out no one knows what it originally looked like. Logan, who cared little for his appearance, no doubt ever bothered to change out of it. And so yeah, he had traveling stuff uh, apart from these things. Skip over most of this. Oh, uh, yeah, Eastern stuff we get without killing him. Yeah, we had that, that. Hollow Thief stuff, Silver Knight, Black Knight, Giant. I think we read this. Yeah. Channeler. Uh, Golem. Smoe's armor. Helm of Smell, the Executioner, protector of the cathedral at the forsaken city of Anorlando. It offers extremely high defense and can be worn by humans, but not without great, great difficulty. Not that interesting. And then we have ghost stuff. Helm of Hawkeye Goth, one of Gwyn's four knights, received as a decoration of knightly honor. Yeah, so I wonder what his looks like. A helm crafted especially for the Honorable Hawkeye Goth. 
Only the eye holes were packed with tree resin by those who dismiss Goth as a brutish giant. So yeah, this is an argument he that I've seen. He uh, was only blind because um, tree resin was was packed into the eye holes, and I don't know if he doesn't know that, whether he's actually blind, or whether he's you know only blind because someone played a trick on him. Armored down by Goth since his days as a dragon slayer, the medallion bequeathed by the Lord himself and the dragon bone pauldrons are the symbols of the highest honor. Received as a decoration of honor, crafted by similar material gauntlets by the worn by the Silver Knights. And then we have the Great Lord's stuff. Crown of Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, who linked the first flame. Lord Gwyn, bearer of the ultimate soul, divided his power amongst his great clan before linking the flame. But he did keep his crown, perhaps to preserve a symbol of the monarch, for its actual power had fully subsided. When he departed, he left only with his great sword, his garb, and the crown, now bereft of power. Mass of the Dark Wraiths, former knights of New Londo, who descended into dark. Some say the skeletal mask is of an ancient dark wraith is per partially fused with the flesh of its face. Their armor transformed and remains a symbol of the dark servants and their diabolical art of life drain. That's it. Oh, we got these these two. The head of an Ulusil resident whose humanity went wild after being devoured by the dark of Manus, father of the abyss. The bloated head is fissured, the cracks lined with innumerable tiny red eyeballs, with a heart outside and mucus filled inside. No sane person could ever wear it. And this is the sorcerer, the head of an Ulusil resident whose humanity went wild. The bloated head the broad head is fissured, the cracks lined with innumerable tiny red eyeballs and accented by protruding brain parts it is lightly enchanted, suggesting that it may have belonged to a sorcerer. Alright, we're almost done. This is new. Symbol of a true knight. Oh, you know what? I think we read all these. And then here's the speckled stone plate uh, that we get from whatever, but this doesn't say much. Precious rare speckled stone plates grant small boost to defense against magic, flame, and lightning. Um, special ring crafted in an eastern land is made of gold, but with a wood grain crest on its surface. The ring slows the loss of weapon durability and is particularly useful to bearers of delicate swords crafted in the East. We read that one. Here's the here's the new one. The special ring crafted in an Eastern land is made of gold, but with a wood grain crest on its surface. Agents of subterfuge in this faraway land are particularly fond of the dark gold wood grain, which greatly alters its wearer's rolling action. <laughs> Ring of Fog, those who befriend Alvina are given this mysterious ring. It resembles a pearl with a robust, pure white fog. The ring camouflages its very presence, helping to prevent detection. And it looks very similar to the Cat Covenant ring. And then here's the Calamity ring. A ring enchanted by the orange eye of Calamite, the bringer of Calamity, doubles damage received by its wearer. A useless ring befitting of no finger, best left unknown, or at least well hidden. And it looks like I never joined the Prince's Covenant. That sucks. Yeah, look at that. It's got a braid on it, just like the Painting Guardians. I thought as much.
Trying to see if this one represents a animal in any way. Kind of looks similar to Artorias and Ornstein's kind of together. And I guess, does this look like an animal? It's cool looking. It's got horns like, like a ram. I like how the eye holes might be down with those lower eyes. Because, like, if you see where my head sits in it, I mean, it still would be hard to see out of them, but you certainly can't see out of the top there. Like, it looks like my eyes are right at that collar. Maybe there's little eye holes in there. Well... That's funny. That I didn't get the uh, the Sun Covenant. Uh, I have not beat uh, Ornstein and Snow in this one, and I'm not going to attempt to do it. Yeah, we're at an hour. <laughs> um, go look up what uh, the Sunlight, the Princess Sunlight Ring or whatever, basically says that Guinevere left Anarlando and married Flame God Flan. Um, and Guinevere plays a little bit of a role in Dark Souls 3, so I tend to think that that actually happened, but anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching my, you know, hobbled together series, uh, and putting up with it, and, uh, I hope maybe you learned one thing, uh, watching this series, or maybe a lot of things, but, uh, Dark Souls is probably my favorite storytelling type right now, and um, and I think that uh, I want to share it with as many people as possible. So, again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for Dark Souls 2.